A townland Irish, Bale Fearain, Ulster Scots, Toonland is a small geographical division of land used in Ireland. The townland system is of Gaelic origin, pre-dating the Norman invasion, and most have names of Irish Gaelic origin. However, some townland names and boundaries come from Norman manors, plantation divisions, or later creations of the Ordnance Survey. The total number of inhabited townlands was 60,679 in 1911. The total number recognised by the Irish Place Names database as of 2014 was 61,098, including uninhabited townlands, mainly small islands. <laughs> <laughs> Background In Ireland a townland is generally the smallest administrative division of land, though a few large townlands are further divided into hundreds. The concept of townlands is based on the Gaelic system of land division, and the first official evidence of the existence of this Gaelic land division system can be found in church records from before the 12th century. It was in the 1600s that they began to be mapped and defined by the English administration for the purpose of confiscating land and apportioning it to investors or planters from Britain. Etymology The term, townland, in English is derived from the Old English word tun, denoting an enclosure. The term describes the smallest unit of land division in Ireland, based on various forms of Gaelic land division, many of which had their own names. The term bale, anglicised as, bally, is the most dominant element used in Irish townland names. Today the term, bally, denotes an urban settlement, but its precise meaning in ancient Ireland is unclear, as towns had no place in Gaelic social organisation. The modern Irish term for a townland is Bale Fearain, plural, Bale T. Fearain. The term Fearain means, land, territory, quarter. The Normans left no major traces in townland names, but they adapted some of them for their own use, possibly seeing a similarity between the Gaelic Bale and the Norman Bailey, both of which meant a settlement. Historical land divisions and etymology Throughout most of Ulster townlands were known as Ballybows, Irish, Bale Bow, meaning cow land, and represented an area of pastoral economic value. In County Cavan similar units were called Poles, and in counties Fermanagh and Monaghan they were known as Tates or Taths. These names appear to be of English origin, but had become naturalised long before 1600. In modern townland names the prefix pole is widely found throughout Western Ireland, its accepted meaning being hole or hollow. In County Cavan, which contains over half of all townlands in Ulster with the prefix pole, some should probably be better translated as the pole of Modern townlands with the prefix tat are confined almost exclusively to the Diocese of Clogger, which covers counties Fermanagh and Monaghan, and the Barony of Clogger in County Tyrone, and cannot be confused with any other Irish word. In County Tyrone, the following hierarchy of land divisions was used: Ballybetta, Irish, Bale Beati, meaning Victualler's Place, Ballybo, Sessia, Irish, Seucuid, meaning sixth part of a quarter, Gort, and Quarter, Irish, Sathru. In County Fermanagh, the divisions were Ballybetta, Quarter, and Tate. Further subdivisions in Fermanagh appear to be related to liquid or grain measures such as gallons, pottles, and pints. In Ulster, the Ballybetta was the territorial unit controlled by an Irish sept, typically containing around 16 townlands. Fragmentation of Ballybettas resulted in units consisting of four, eight and twelve townlands. One of these fragmented units, the quarter, representing a quarter of a Ballybetta, was the universal land denomination recorded in the survey of County Donegal conducted in 1608. In the early 17th century 20% of the total area of western Ulster was under the control of the church. These termin Lands consisted likewise of Ballybettas and Ballybos, but were held by Aranas instead of Sept leaders. Other units of land division used throughout Ireland include In County Tipperary, Capale Lands, and Quatermeres. A Capale Land 
consisted of around 20 great acres one great acre equaled 20 English acres. In the province of Connacht, quarters and cartrons, Irish, Sathru Mir, also anglicised as Caromir, a quarter being reckoned as four cartrons, and each cartron being 30 acres. The quarter has also been anglicised as Caro, Carhu, or Caracute, Irish, Sathru Cuid. In County Clare, as in Connacht, quarters, half quarters, Irish, Leith Sathru, cartrons, and Sessia, here a half quarter equated to around 60 acres, a cartron equated to around 30 acres, and a sessia was around 20 acres. Cartrons were also sometimes called plowlands or sizre, Irish, sacereach, meaning a team of horses yoked to a plough. Thomas Larkham, the first director of the Ordnance Survey of Ireland, made a study of the ancient land divisions of Ireland and summarised the traditional hierarchy of land divisions thus. 10 acres 1 neve, 2 neves 1 sessia, 3 seshes 1 tate or balibo, 2 balibos 1 plowland, sizre or caro, 4 plowlands 1 balibeta, or townland, 30 balibetas, triosha sade or barony. This hierarchy was not applied uniformly across Ireland. For example, a balibeta or townland could contain more or less than four plowlands. Further confusion arises when it is taken into account that, while Larkham used the general term, acres. In his summary, terms such as great acres, large acres, and small acres were also used in records. Writing in 1846, Larkham remarked that the large and small acres had no fixed ratio between them, and that there were various other kinds of acre in use in Ireland, including the Irish acre, the English acre, the Cunningham acre, the plantation acre and the statute acre. The Ordnance Survey maps used the statute acre measurement. The quality and situation of the land affected the size of these acres. The Cunningham acre is given as intermediate between the Irish and English acres. Many of these land division terms have been preserved in the names of modern townlands. For example, the term, Cartron, in both its English and Irish forms has been preserved in the townland names of Caromir, Cartron and Carovere, while the term, Sessia, Survives in the names Shisha, Shishodonal, Shishimor, and Shesiv. The terms Balibo and Balibeta tend to be preserved in the truncated form of Bali as a prefix for some townland names, such as Ballymacaradibeg near Pointspass, County Down. Less well known land division terms may be found in other townland names, such as Kugula, Irish, Quij Ulad, the Ulster Fifth, Treemana, Irish, and Train Minoc, the Third Middle. And Dahamade Irish, and Daichumed, the tenth part. A problem with the term Bali in some townland names is that it can be difficult to distinguish between the Irish terms Bale meaning townland and Bial Atha meaning approach to a ford. An example of the latter is Ballyshannon, County Donegal, which is derived from Bial Atha Sini. Topic: <laughs> Size and value. The average area of a townland is about 325 acres, 1.32 square kilometers, 132 hectares, but they vary widely in size. William Reeves's 1861 survey states that the smallest was Old Church Yard, near Carrickmore, in the parish of Termonmagurk, County Tyrone, at 0.625 acres 0.253 hectares and the largest, at 7,555 acres 30.57 square kilometers, 11.805 square miles, was in as Fionan also called Finon in the parish of Killinan, County Galway. In fact, the townland of Klonskeag in the barony of Uppercross abutting the main Klonskeag townland in the barony of Dublin was only 0.3 acres 0.12 hectares although the area is now urbanised, so that the townlands are unused and their boundaries are uncertain. The Ballybo, a townland unit used in Ulster, was described in 1608 as containing 60 acres of arable land, meadow, and pasture. However, this was misleading, as the size of townlands under the Gaelic system varied depending upon their quality, situation and economic potential. This economic potential varied from the extent of land required to graze cattle to the land required to support several families. 
The highest density of townland units recorded in Ulster in 1609 corresponds to the areas with the highest land valuations in the 1860s. It seems that many moorland areas were not divided into townlands until fairly recently. These areas were formerly shared as a common summer pasturage by the people of a whole parish or barony. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Historical use. Until the 19th century most townlands were owned by single landlords and occupied by multiple tenants. The cess, used to fund roadworks and other local expenses, was charged at the same rate on each townland in a barony, regardless of its size and productive capacity. Thus, occupiers in a small or poor townland suffered in comparison to those of larger or more fertile townlands. This was reformed by Griffith's valuation. Irish Ordnance Survey and Standardization During the 19th century an extensive series of maps of Ireland was created by the Irish Division of the Ordnance Survey for taxation purposes. These maps both documented and standardised the boundaries of the more than 60,000 townlands in Ireland. The process often involved dividing or amalgamating existing townlands, and defining townland boundaries in areas such as mountain or bog that had previously been outside the townland system. Slight adjustments are still made. There were 60,679 in 1911, compared to 60,462 townlands in 1901. Current use. Townlands form the building blocks for higher level administrative units such as parishes and district electoral divisions in the Republic of Ireland or wards in Northern Ireland. Before 1972 townlands were included on all rural postal addresses throughout the island, but in that year the Royal Mail decided that the townland element of the address was obsolete in Northern Ireland. Townland names were not banned, but they were deemed superfluous information, and people were asked not to include them on addresses. They were to be replaced by house numbers, road names and postcodes. In response the townlands campaign emerged to protest against the changes. It was described as a ground-level community effort. Taking place in the midst of the Troubles, the campaign was a rare example of unity between Catholics and Protestants, Nationalists and Unionists. Townlands and their names seem to have been considered as a shared resource and heritage. Those involved in the campaign argued that, in many areas, people still strongly identified with their townlands and that this gave them a sense of belonging. The Royal Mail's changes were seen as a severing of this link. At the time, the county councils were the government bodies responsible for validating the change. However, as local government itself was undergoing changes, the Royal Mail's decision was allowed to become law almost by default. County Fermanagh is the only county in Northern Ireland that managed to resist the change completely. Nevertheless, many newer road signs in parts of Northern Ireland now show townland names see picture. In 2001 the Northern Ireland Assembly passed a motion requesting government departments to make use of townland addresses in correspondence and publications. In the Republic of Ireland townlands continue to be used on addresses. In 2005 the Department of Communications, Energy and Natural Resources announced that a postcode system was to be introduced see Republic of Ireland postal addresses. The system, known as Aircode, was introduced in 2014, but as of 2016 it is still not widely used and townlands remain the predominant address identifiers in rural areas. See also Lists of townlands in Ireland by county Topic Footnotes Topic Sources Barry, Terry, ed. The twelfth of november twenty twelve. A history of settlement in Ireland. Routledge ISBN 9781134674633. Moore, K. Celebrating Ulster's Townlands. 
Ulster Placename Society. Archived from the original on 19 October 2006. Reeves, W. The 22nd of April 1861. On the Townland Distribution of Ireland. Proceedings of the Royal Irish Academy, 7 to 473 490. JSTOR 20,489,906. Robinson, Philip. 2000. The Plantation of Ulster. Ulster Historical Foundation. ISBN 978-1-903688-00-7. General Alphabetical Index to the Townlands and Towns, Parishes and Baronies of Ireland, 1861. Census Greater than 1861 Greater than Ireland. HISTPOP, org. p. 258. Retrieved 20 May 2014.